In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do your quick storage estimate using Flow. Now, quick storage estimate is usually done so we can put a price on the project. So it's not the final volume figure that you're gonna use in your drainage model. And God forbid, no, that's not the one because that'll be way too much. Usually your quick storage estimate is slightly higher than the final storage volume that you're actually gonna use. The reason being is you have many things that you have not considered yet. For example, number of pipes, the volume in the pipes, time of entries, areas, all the suds, all these things contribute in detailing your final storage volume requirement. Now, why do we need an attenuation storage on site? Attenuation storage is provided to limit the runoff rate from the site. So if you agreed that you're gonna discharge, let's say five liters per second, attenuation storage, basically what it does is it holds back all the water that was not being able to be discharged when you were discharging a five liters per second. Now there will be a future video for attenuation storages itself and we're gonna dive into it in detail and see examples and what factors you should take in consideration when designing your attenuation storage. But in this tutorial, we're just gonna do flow, a quick storage estimate. Without further ado, let's begin. First things first, we need to acquire our site characteristics. To do that, we need to go to the HR Wellingford website. Now, you need an account, but don't worry, they will not ask you for your credit cards. Now, after you create your account, you go to Tools, Surface Water Storage Volume Estimation. Now, you will say, hey, why do I need Flow to do that? Well, Flow does the simulation, this does not. Then in the map, we're just gonna zoom in uh, where we are, select our site. So in this case, I'm just gonna select where I work. So it's in Meadow Road. So once you click on the map, we'll pick up the coordinates and we'll speak with the HR warning for server and acquire the M5 and 60 and R ratio, which is what you need. In Birmingham, I know it's 20 and 0 0.4. So we minimize this. We go to our simulation settings, we type at the M560 20 and the R ratio 0.4. The summer is V and the winter is V, we keep it as it is. The drain town, we're not gonna touch them. Now, return periods and climate change. Now, the attenuation storage should be designed for the 100 year plus climate change. Now, regarding the climate change percentage, I made a video, I'll leave it in the link in the description below. But in a nutshell is this, 20% and have a sensitivity check done for 40%. And the 40% should not increase the discharge rate. But if the volume increases or if there is any flooding, as long as it's maintained on site and does not pose any risk to the residents or the buildings or to third adjacent lands, then you should be fine. So we're gonna do the 100 for 20. And the reason we're doing this is because if we do the 40, it might come up with a way higher storage than we actually gonna need. Now the storage volume will become more clear and definite as you progress your design drainage model. This has many factors like time of entries, areas, uh, the pipes, uh, the suds, all the stuff they use affect the storage volume. They don't affect the discharge rate but the actual volume. So we're gonna do the 120 because we don't wanna make our QS run away because it's too much. Then in the return period, we're gonna type 105 liters per second. The reason we're typing it here because these are the ones that it will check for the discharge rate. Then we're gonna do a storage estimate. So we're gonna click calc. Now we're not gonna do any infiltrations as I didn't have any infiltration values, but it can do the infiltrations and we'll jump in it in a second. So return period 100, 20% impermeable area, let's keep it one hectare. Discharge rate, we want five liters per second. Now, in the infiltration coefficient, if you click calc, it will calculate your infiltration rate using the Bree 365 method. Now, if you click cancel, you go back. And if we hit the calc in the required storage, it will give us a storage estimate. Now, for one hectare, based on five liters per second for the 100 year and 20%, we need somewhere between 529 to 709. A rule of thumb is to take the average to begin with. So we're going to take 650 in this case. So we're going to hit OK. Now, the next step is to go to Nodes tab. And we're going to create a node. So basically, we're going to tell, hey, this node is our storage. So let's name our node storage. This is a beautiful thing about flow. You can name your nodes, whatever you want. Area is one hectare. Time of entry, it's between four and eight. So we're going to use five. Cover level, let's do the classic hundred. And then we don't need the diameter width. East thinks zero, north thinks zero, just because we can. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set that storage as a junction. So basically dimensionless, if you may. Now it will still pop up yellow because a junction needs input and output. So basically a start and finish. This is just a junction. Then we're going to go to our storage. 
Now in the storage, in the node column, we're gonna add where we want our storage. So we want it on the node named storage. I know it's time bit confusing, but I'd rather them see in the report says storage rather than S1, if that makes sense. Then in the structure type, depending on what kind of attenuation structure you're gonna use, you can pick from a list they have here. We're gonna go for the OG classic depth area. If you have the infiltration rates, you can plug them in. Now the safety factor, I leave it as two. However, in the SUDS manual, in table 25.2, the safety factor changes for the infiltration system. So basically it depends on the area and the consequences of failure. So the higher the consequence, the higher area, the higher the safety factor. So if you know this table can be applied in the attenuation storage without infiltration, let me know in the comments below as I would like to know and possibly other people too. We're gonna leave it to porosity for serial storage usually is 0.95. You can always speak with the manufacturer and get a more detailed one if they can give you one. Now, invert level, since we have a cover level of 100, and let's say we want to have a cover from the ground to the tank, 1 meter, and 1 meter depth tank, so 98. The depth area infiltration area column, how does it work? So, because we don't have an infiltration area, we're not going to worry about this, and we're going to cover it in a different tutorial. So, the depth is basically the actual depth so it tells you so we have a graph here on the right so it's zero half a meter one meter 152 so and the area is basically the area of your tank so at depth zero if we put an area of one you can see here these two lines represent the one the distance represents the one square meter now if we go to depth one and add one again you might notice nothing has changed but if you have changed the area from one to ten you will notice that it became wider at the top and smaller at the bottom. That's because the bottom represents a one and the at the one meter depth represents the 10. Now it continues going up, it's not closed. But in our case, we have a box. So a box has the same dimension at the bottom and at the top. However, it's closed. To close that, the trick is to add to the last depth you have inputted in this case one at 0.01 so we're going to create a new depth of 1.001 and then area of zero the reason we do this is because at zero we have let's say an area of one at one meter depth we have an area of one but at 1.1 we have an area of zero if that makes sense so then we're going to hit the calc button and since we want a volume of 650 we're gonna set the volume to 650 and type apply. This will calculate the area for a volume of 650 and a porosity of 0.95. And if you click on another row and go back, the storage is green, so you've done everything correctly. If not, it will be red and it will probably highlight the error. The next thing we want is the flow control. So if we go to flow control tab, we're gonna specify the flow control type that we're gonna use to limit our runoff rate because that's what tanks are basically doing. They're aiding us to limit the runoff rate because we're containing volume on site. Node, storage, again. Control type, we're gonna go for the OG hydro brake again. And then invert level, we're gonna do half a meter below the invert level of the tank just to give it some design depth. So 97.5. Now the design depth is the top of the tank to the bottom of your flow control. So that should be a meter and a half because the tank is one meter and the invert level is half a meter below the invert level of the tank. Now design flow is five liters per second. And then we're just gonna hit calc. Now it will calculate the graph for us. And once everything is okay, if we don't need to upsize any node, then we should be good to go. So to check that, just click outside. See it's red. Specify node is too small for control. If we go back and we hit upsize. And if we click outside, it's green. The next thing we need to do is just run our simulation. So we hit the gearbox and there we go. So now we don't have any flooding. The most critical event is the 480 minute winter and the node volume is 538. We specified 650, so we can reduce it down. So we go back to our storage. We go, let's say to 550, hit apply. It will change the areas and then hit again the gearbox and you can see 536 we're still okay maybe we can reduce it a tiny bit more we go 540 actually let's go 535 
apply and then hit the gearbox again we're good we're close it's like node is 536 so it's okay then if you want to view what you've designed you can hit the 3d model and you can see your tank here so flow has a very good 3d modeling viewer i think that's the right termination to call it so basically you can view it very well and if you hit the play button you can actually see everything so you can see your tank slowly filling up and all your hard work paying off. So probably once you're done, you want to PDF it and send it to your uh, senior engineer just to have a look at it. To do that, you just go to design report. In the print, you check the design settings, nodes, simulation settings, flow controls, storage structures, and critical results. These, I believe, they're most essentials that you need. If you hit the refresh document, you can see that it created it for us. So we have the design settings, so basically what design settings were used. Then we have the nodes, so basically the cover level areas and time of entry, etc. And we have the simulation settings that we use to simulate uh, the results, the storm durations, and the return period and climate change, and then the flow control and then the storage structure and then on the second page we have the results from the simulation if you go to headings you can add some headings as well for example it's project number cts and if you hit refresh you can see it pops here now if you want to save it just hit the save icon and save it and that's your quick storage estimate done quickly and easily so if you liked the video hit the like button if you loved it smash that subscribe button also don't forget it to share with your colleagues as i'm trying to grow this community of civil engineers so we can help each other and learn and progress as civil engineers and i hope you stay safe and i'll see you in the next tutorial